Welcome to the land of the continuing shit show of the electric motorbike. This particular episode is going to be pretty quick. I'm just going to walk you through what happened when I tried to start working on disabling the brake control to drive the controller. What this does is it it's meant to prevent you having the throttle and the brake on at the same time. Seems counterintuitive. Why would you want to stop and go at the same time? And that's what the bike implements. There's a signal going into the controller that says when you squeeze the throttle, uh, squeeze the brake, the motor disengages. Now, in theory, it sounds good, but in practice, it's actually not so good. One thing I learned while, while uh, riding my gasoline scooter here is when you're running at very low speed, like in the the motorbike parking lot at the mall, you want to be able to give it a little bit of gas and squeeze the brake a little bit to moderate your speed. You know, you, you could be going half a mile an hour, one mile an hour, but you still want to maintain control. The downside with this bike is that once you let off the brake, the motor re-engages and even with the tiniest bit of throttle, it jumps forward quite dramatically which is you lose control and it's dangerous you could plow into something that you don't want to so my goal was to find that wire and just simply remove it from the connector so the controller never thinks the brake is being squeezed so I encountered the problem with this the connector that goes into the controller as you can see three of the wires popped right out of the back of the connector. Even worse, one of the wires, the little square pin unobtainium connector pin, came right off the wire. Luckily, I found it on the ground, but it's already crimped, and despite my tiniest screwdrivers, I cannot get this wire back into the connector in order to crimp it back in place. So my only choice is to try and bodge up a soldering joint for it and get it back inside. Now, having said that, I stumbled onto the next problem. On this little sticker here that you can't read, it says this is model LBM060122HK2. With a lot of hard work, I actually found the manual for it on the internet. I don't know if it's going to focus. LBM C060122 HK2. It's got the description, parameters, and the wiring diagram for all the wires that go into it and come out of it, which is very handy. Now, one thing that it took me a minute to twig onto is it says rated output power 1.2 kW, 1.2 kilowatts, 1,200 watts. Now, alert viewers will remember that I paid extra to get the 3,000 watt motor for this bike, the high power version of this bike. But it's still running the same controller that they used for the 1000 watt standard version of this bike. So, anybody see a problem? I've got a big motor, but the controller is not capable of running it to its full capacity. That's like putting a V8 into a Pinto, but keeping the same fuel pump. It's, you just can't deliver enough fuel to the motor to make it do its job right. So, now I'm pissed. I've got this connector problem. I've got a controller that is not the right model for what I purchased. And so, I'm thinking of just pulling this controller and buying one from a company called Kelly. Uh, it's the ones that Abel's been using in his bikes all along. 
Uh, they're well documented, they're robust, and they're programmable. So I could actually buy one of their really nice controllers which is rated at 6 kilowatts. Now stick with me for a minute. If I put a 6 kilowatt controller in here, what does that mean? Well, that means it can put out a maximum of 6,000 watts to the motor. But since it's programmable, I can change the settings to tell it only put out 3,000 watts. And that matches up with the motor I've got in the bike perfectly. I can also use this battery pack, the 60 volt battery pack, into that controller just the way it is today. Or in the future I can upgrade the battery pack to keep it at 60 volts or move to 72 volts which is much more common in the industry. Make a big ass lithium pack rated at 72 volts and some outrageous four, five, six kilowatt hours. Drive that highly robust and configurable controller and try to get the power to the motor in the back. So now I'm, I'm at a fork in the road and I'm thinking along with the DC to DC converter that just failed, alert viewers will remember that from the last episode where I was trying to drive the horn and the headlights at 60 volts. Um, I'm just thinking about scrapping this controller and the DC to DC converter and just rebuilding the entire brains of this whole thing. It doesn't thrill me to do this, but in the end, it's going to give me the performance that I paid for originally with the robustness of a very well-respected controller company that I can get documentation for, I can get technical questions answered, and has a fully programmable interface. So, I think I've almost convinced myself. So the next video is probably going to be a long way off from when I order it to when it uh, comes in. So the next video you're going to see is probably be me unboxing a new badass Kelly controller. Yeehaw!